What is up YouTube family? It's Andrea here at VW Family Farm. It's a beautiful late summer day here on the farm. I thought today, it's been a while that I've taken y'all around and just shown you what's going on. So I thought I'd just take you around today, show you what's going on with the animals, what all projects we've got going on, and just give you a general update on things. So let's head out. Um, I'm gonna watch my step because I don't wanna step out of this garage onto a snake or something. And I'm just gonna forewarn you, it's a little breezy here, which if you've been around here very long, you know that's pretty typical. I will try to talk loud so y'all can hear me, but I'm gonna apologize in advance if some of the sound on this video gets a little crazy because I can't control the wind. So let's head out. I'm gonna give y'all some um, just updates on what animals do we still have and why and how are they doing. Um, show you what Ben's up to. He's actually home from work today and show you why because he's not home for fun necessarily. All right, so let's start over here with the sheep. Um, they're doing awesome. Really fat and sassy, growing well. We kept, and they're gonna talk to you. We kept three ewes and then we've got a ram and then we've got a young ram. Um, so that's all we kept out in this pasture. It was really overloaded with sheep and goats. We were having uh, some parasite problems. We were having a lot of foot rot because they were keeping it uh, just really like no grass out there and just a lot of dirt and mud. We were moving them around the yard. If you've been around here a while, mowing our yard and I still do that in some places but for the most part we scored an awesome lawn mower for like a hundred dollars it just cost us the price of a new battery to get it going um, and I'm just gonna be quite frank and honest I tried the sheep mowing the yard and the goats and while I liked it I did not like poop everywhere all over my yard so I'm kind of enjoying having a mowed yard again and we've got so many animal pens that I really don't have that much to mow. One hour I can get out here and get it pretty good and mowed and then I don't have poop everywhere. And I've got plenty of grass for the sheep we have left. Um, and I really just got to the point, sheep are better grazers, goats are better browsers on brows and like vines and things, things that don't come back as quick. Um, but sheep do a really good job of eating grass. So I've still got a small herd um, that I can move around and they can clean up grassy areas. And then, she's laying way over there in the barn, is Katie. We had to keep some sheep for her to protect because that's her nature, that's her job. She, I love that dog. And she's really good at her job. Um, so, we had to keep her some animals to hang out with. And uh, don't know what the future of our sheep and Katie is, how long we'll keep sheep and all that. We're just taking it as it comes. Uh, if you've been around here very long, you know we jumped into a huge herd of cattle this last winter. So that's taken a lot of time and energy and that's actually why Ben is off today. Let me take you over there. But that has brought a lot of things um, to the forefront for us that has brought the question, why are we doing what we're doing? Why did we get this animal? Why do we keep struggling with this animal when we're not utilizing what they bring to the homestead? We're not drinking goat's milk. We're not doing this or that. You're not, you don't need the quail eggs and all that. So, um, that kind of brought a lot of things, drug them out and exposed them to light for us. Like, probably need to reevaluate because you can't do everything. Now you've got 150 head of cattle. So, um, that, that's kind of why we scaled back. We may actually take that sheep pen at some point if we get rid of sheep totally, which I'm not ready to make that step yet. But if we do, we might turn that into a pig pen and get pigs totally out of our cow pastures because right now they're kind of coexisting. They do pretty well, but the cows don't get fed every day and pigs do. And so they kind of want to fight a little bit and um, afraid they're gonna hurt each other. So we may eventually get rid of sheep and just turn that into like the boar and sow pen maybe, or maybe a weaning pen for piglets. We don't know yet. But let's go check out what Ben's doing. All right, here we are once again, working on the wonderful tractor. I got a good friend that we go to church with that he has replaced the clutch in this. As you can see, there's a brand new alternator on it, brand new air compressor. I mowed, uh, well, right after he got it fixed, I took it and started mowing hay. Had a good clear week. I took didn't off get, vacation. Yeah, 
I was on vacation, took off, it was actually Monday, and uh, I hadn't mowed, I don't know, 300 yards and the thing started overheating. Well, I called him and he needed to rotate. Uh, we done some testing, in field testing, and figured out it was the water pump. So, getting a water pump ordered, getting it put on today. Went and, back to work. No hay was done. Well, that was went back to work Tuesday and Wednesday. Yeah. 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 Well, which, I mean, it may have been the Lord doing that because it come a shower Tuesday with, I think there was 10% chance of rain, and it come a pretty good little shower, so. I don't want my hay to get wet. It all worked out. We're going to get it done. So, Ben is off work again. He wound up having to go back to work for a couple days, like he told you, um, because we have a certain amount of vacation we can use for fun and a certain amount that we have to save for working and doing things like doing our hay. Um, so here it is the end of the week. You will probably be seeing this on Monday, but it's actually Thursday. So he's took off again today and tomorrow. Gonna try to get the tractor repaired and start mowing hay. We have about 70 acres of hay to do. So that's about, I'm a numbers person. So I timed him the first round of uh, hay that we did. It took about 18 hours to get that much hay cut. Uh, and then you have to let it cure for a, however long it takes, a couple days, and then you have to bale it, which in theory should go faster because every swath you're making with the mower, you can pick up a, at least about two of those with our rake. Now everybody's equipment is different depending on how long your mower is and how wide your rake is and stuff. So it's, it doesn't work out to half the time, but it should definitely be dramatically less than um, what it took to mow it. So, gonna try to get it mowed today and tomorrow, and then um, let it cure, and hopefully we'll be baling soon. And then, it's getting so late in the year, we're calling it good for this year on the hay. We've already got enough. This will just put us over the top, and this is better hay than we have at this point. Um, sometimes you can get a third. Sometimes, very rarely, you can get a fourth cut in here in Arkansas. But instead of even trying to get a third here when we don't necessarily need it, we're gonna extend our grazing season. We're gonna pop up some temporary fences back there on that 70 acres and rotate them a little bit this fall and just give them more to eat without us feeding them hay. So that's the plan there. If we can just get through this cutting, it'll only take us about four or five days total to do this, but there's there could be so many factors come in, so many breakdowns, whatever. So that's it, that's why Ben's here. Um, I just run back and forth bringing him diesel, bringing him water and food, and sometimes I'll switch off and I'll take a turn and mow for a while. Um, so that's that. Mama and baby. Okay, so I always try to show y'all the good, bad, and ugly. It's just farm life, just homesteading. You can't count your chickens before they hatch because Honestly, they may never hatch. Our sow, it's its really the best sow we've ever had as far as she does really well at having piglets. She doesn't lose a bunch during birth because if they don't have them quick enough, you'll almost always lose a piglet or two. But she had 10 healthy piglets, did not lose one single one this time. We were pumped. We've never raised a batch of piglets that we didn't lose some, at least a couple at birth or in the first little while or whatever. But this time she had them all and they lived for several days and they were healthy, um, got them up and going, just everything was going great. And then we had three disappear, just all at once. And we don't really have predators very much here because all of our animal pens are surrounded by cow pastures and we just have animals everywhere. We have three dogs. We, we've had predator problems in the past when it get growed up around here and they could sneak up to like our barn, but it's just not growed up anymore. Everything's cut down. It's a long way to the woods. So they've gotta be pretty brave to come up here. Went on our trip to Amish country and right before we went, we noticed there was a group of four hanging out together and a group of three. And while my parents were feeding, I talked to them and they said, we're only seeing four. And I said, well, don't worry about it. There's another group of three that likes to hang out together and you probably, you may not see them both at the same time. They kind of like to pile up and sleep during the day when they're young in little groups. But got home and those three are gone too. So we only have four piglets left. 
that's not many for us because we raise not only for ourselves but for other people but that's just the way it goes we have to just keep pressing on because there's nothing we can do about it we got some beautiful pheasants from Todd and Jared that reap what you sow they're really cool They like to hide when I come in here. Found a teenager animal. Who are you feeding? The pigs. <laughs> they love a camera in their face. These are what we call the teenager pigs. These are about seven months old. getting big so here's mom and daddy pig and the babies have made their way over here these are who I'm talking about we might move up front because there's a little shelter up there where the sheep are um, just more protection from the weather uh, they don't need this big of an area that would be a pretty good size area for for pigs not to mention the front pasture has been taken over by nut grass we wouldn't mind if they um, wallered around a bit and kind of got that disturbed because that nut grass is spreading everywhere like crazy i've also got a couple of future milkers for my milk herd out here there's one and there's two over under the shade um i'm just keeping an eye on them they are actually bred and i'm just watching them because i may need to pull their calves because heifers sometimes have trouble um so that's why they're out here just hanging out with them keeping them kind of tame um so that's what they're doing these are our next batch of layers actually they belong to lane and emily they're about to get moved on to fresh grass they get moved um from spot to spot as they eat the grass we move them so they stay on fresh grass and bugs and stuff uh, pretty regularly so some of these are about to go to our county fair that's part of the 4-h project that the kids do they give them the chickens to raise and then in the fall each participant has to take three to the fair so lane and emily will both take three um, they have they judge them and you get a ribbon according to how well of a job you did growing the chickens out um, <clears throat> so that is people are interested in how lane and emily make money that is how they make money they give them those chickens take three back to the fair and if you did a good job and you get a blue ribbon you get more money than someone who maybe didn't take as well of care of their chickens and get a red or a white but all kids get something for their time and effort uh, but it's based on how well you did and then the rest of the chickens they usually get about anywhere from 15 to 20 each kid uh, the rest of them are yours to keep and right about fall they're starting to lay and they're fresh layers so they'll lay all winter long um, so it's really a good deal the first few years Lane and Emily did it Ben and I fed them fed the chickens bought the feed and then when it came fair time and they gave them their money we were like this feels a little weird giving kids money for raising chickens when we actually paid the money and did the work and then um, it was time to sell the eggs also and that brings in a profit so we we just decided we told them you know you're gonna have to spend a little bit the first year to feed out chickens that aren't laying but after that you've got a good gig going on because you got free chicks fresh egg layers every year you can sell the eggs and you can make a little bit of money and they took it and ran with it it's an awesome way for a young teen to um, have a quote-unquote job um, that only takes a few minutes a day it's really been a great thing at teaching them money management and putting money into something before you ever see a profit that was that was a pretty good lesson for them too okay I absolutely love these chickens these are the olive eggers and Easter eggers that we got some from Jeff at bobblehead that these were eggs that been hatched um, the ones we actually got from Jeff the chickens they're out with our big flock of chickens I'll take you out there in a second and then we got some eggs from David Monroe one of our viewers that we become friends with um, I just love these they're so cool looking they're starting to really look like hens and roosters instead of just little 
little chicks. Can't wait for them to start laying eggs. Scariest animal on the entire farm. And here's the beautiful ladies and a couple gentlemen. These are a mixture of Lane and Emily's layers from last year. My East Draggers and Olive Eggers, they're, they're my buffs and they're my um, Bard Rocks. All the red ones belong to Lane and Emily. But I made a deal with them. If they'll feed mine, they can have the eggs if I get as many eggs as I want. Worked out good for all of us. So now I'm not buying chicken feed, but I get to keep my little flock of birds. They're getting more eggs. Everybody's happy. Found me a helper. Yay. Say hello. Hello. <laughs> We're gonna go check cows and I'm gonna show you all the cows and the milk cows to kind of wrap this little update video up. So let's go. So this is Blondie. Uh, she is the bossiest, sassiest leader of this whole group, but I love her. She had a little heifer just a couple weeks ago and that's her walking. She's super cute and sweet. And then Josie's over there in the pond and this is her bull. Uh, actually, when Two Family was visiting, that's the one that we saw her trying to have and his little head was swelled up. He was stuck, I thought he was dead. Uh, she couldn't have him and I had to pull it and I actually had to get Lane to help me pull it to get it out and thankfully it was alive. It was barely alive but he bounced back. You can see him running like crazy over there to his mama. He's doing great. Here's my other two milk cows and their babies. They've got good looking big bulls. Um, this is Bella right there and Butter is laying over there. I love these girls. I've had them the longest. They were my first two full-blooded Jersey cows. They're sweet, easy keepers. Really love them. And these are their two bulls. This is Bella's bull. And then this little bull over here, he's a little saucy. Uh, we have to keep an eye on him as he's getting bigger and bigger. But he is the best looking Jersey bull we've ever raised. We're kind of thinking about keeping him just because he is, you can't tell because he's laying down right now, he is the best looking little Jersey bull to come off this farm yet. What's he doing? Last stop, my chauffeur is going to take me to the beef cows. Now we've got two groups of beef cows across the highway. We've got a group of 20 over there on uh, a neighbor's pasture that he wanted us to keep his pasture uh, cleaned up helps us out and gives us more grazing and then we've got a group of eight we call it the bachelors um, they're bulls and steers that are young that they're also at that man's farm on a little small paddock over there we've got a little rotational grazing system set up over there for that 20 group of cows um, it's not as ideal as over here but let's go gr look at the group that's back here there's still 115 head of cows back here that this guy takes care of he comes back here um, every couple days and moves them, moves their water and minerals and checks them out and all that. So, let's go. Let me make something clear. Okay. I was the one who noticed Josie's baby was stuck, so. You did. I pretty much saved it. Here Not we bragging. Go. Here we go. Thing. This is what we do in this family when someone's fishing for credit. We go, credit. So, Thank credit you. to you. Thank you. All right, let's go. They know Lane and they know this mule. They are in a field with plenty of grass. They got moved yesterday. What? They got moved yesterday. But they're they're raring to go. They're like the little ladies sitting with their purse ready, ready for somebody to call and ask them to go somewhere. They're funny because when I get to go to move them, they'll be at the back of the paddock, and all I gotta do is like holler once, and they come in like a stampeded, like single file line. They're orderly. Okay? Oh yeah. So when they're not moving, what we come back here for every single day, sometimes more than once a day, is 
we are making sure their water uh, they can knock the line off and not be having any water it can just be pouring on the ground um, and because we've got a tank that's hooked to a well in our backyard and it's got a float on it so if they knock it off it's just gonna spray and spray and spray so we're checking water and we're checking for new babies we're checking for injuries like limping cows cows off by themselves that's something's not right uh, we're looking at cows that we've noticed have a big udder that are getting close to calving uh, just all those kinds of things it's not very labor intensive on the days you're not moving them it's just a lot of um, you better be on your toes so you don't miss something major Okay, so I told y'all a minute ago how Lane and Emily have made money on chickens. Well, they did that for several years and saved up their profit from working for us. Um, uh, they actually were saving birthday money, egg money, all kinds of stuff. And um, they actually saved up and they each bought a young heifer. Now they had to wait a couple years before they had a calf, but now it's the second year for their heifers to calf. Uh, this is Lane's second calf, Emily's cow. Um, last year had trouble and her calf actually died that's a story for a whole nother day that was a whole nother lesson learned um, just how things don't work out sometimes all right guys thanks for hanging out with me and going around the farm and and checking things out as you can see there's still babies being born all the time things are in full swing around here with the animals especially the cows Ben's over there about to get things wrapped up with the tractor um, and then we will be cutting hay so this shirt, to me, I just saw the shirt. I was like, oh, I have to have that. It just says it all, grateful. Not that I am always grateful. I wish I could say every day I'm so grateful. But when I stop and think about it and get my focus where I want it to be, I am grateful because this is the life I've always dreamed of, having all these animals, living out here in the country on the farm. Um, that is a dream to me. It may not be to everybody, but it's, it's my dream. So... I want to remind myself every day to be grateful for it and for all the blessings that come our way. And when the hard times come our way, just realize that those are going to come and you just have to push through and uh, remain grateful for what you do have. And so that's where I'm at. I hope this video finds you well. Thanks for watching. We appreciate y'all so much and we will see you later. God bless.